Uh, and like you said, maybe Little Man can have one thing on his mantle that Skimbo does not this year. Little Man will be in the home uniforms, the blue with the yellow pants, and Bobcats will be in all white. And that comes from, you, you told me, it was from the Ohio. Ohio Bob University, Bucks. absolutely. Is Frank Solich still coaching the team? Let me check Wikipedia <laughs> for you. We'll find out. I know I get to see them quite a bit. I love the, uh, like, they were like the Thursday nights and the Tuesday nights when I, I love watching those games, playing, you know, Akron and Illinois State. Those are always high-scoring, entertaining games. So first and ten for Bobcats. Playbook-wise here for Bobcats, you're going to see him uh, run the ball more often than not. Uh, the problem that I had with that, uh, looking at his lineup, he said all his cap saving was done on the offensive line. <laughs> and his very next line was he wants to run the ball. Yeah, that, for some reason that doesn't go hand in hand, but maybe he's going to use that speed on the outside and hope he gets some trucks out of Ricky Williams. Only got one. And on first down, so that'll bring up a second and nine. Here's the opening drive of the ball game. Goes to the toss once again. Maybe it's all speed on that line. It worked right there. And, uh, boy, you don't see a user stiff arm much anymore. And I and I love it. Guess uh, when it comes to Ricky there, it doesn't matter what your offensive line can do. If you can make people miss, then just little boy people off you like that. It's not going to matter whatsoever. New Orleans offensive playbook for Bobcats. Little man going to come out in the New York Giants defensive book. That was a legit run right there. A little spin to the inside, a little anticipated the stiff arm. Gets him across midfield at the 48-yard line. Uh-oh. More pitch. Am I having a flashback? Little Stevie J. Hasn't worked on that run. It seemed like more tosses than I anticipated. But maybe if you're tossing, you get yourself out in space, you don't have to rely on the offensive line as much. Yeah, as long as they got the speed to get out there and, and seal some of those secondary. You don't need great run blocking when you're, you talk about getting one of your guards out there on a corner. And this time, it's all Ricky Williams right now, and he'll lose another yard. You see Peppers in on the tackle there. Now, little man cap-wise on defense, spent most of it on hit power. Jabril Peppers just comes in, makes a great classic tackle there. Doesn't let him get away from him. Uh, you'll see some hitters in Little Man's secondary. He's got B-Doc, Ed Reed, Sean Taylor, and Derwin James out on his field right now. Third and 14. It's been run, 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 a short pass. And now he's going to have to get down to the 39-yard line. He's going to run it with Vic. He's got room, but gets tripped up. There was Page, the defensive tackle, tracking back. And here's a hurry up on fourth and five. Swings it to the outside. Ricky Williams on the wheel route will pick up the first down. Great play call there. Didn't get, had two guys coming at him. Didn't move whatsoever. Wasn't worried about it. Just set his feet and threw. Boy, at one point thought he had a guy up the seam, but a little cross man action on the other side. Makes the right read, picks up the first down. He's at the 35-yard line. Now he is on a 17 cap kicker that does give him 88 kick power. So from 52, he's got to feel pretty confident. But from 59, not quite as confident. You know, that's a big time sack. Loss of seven as Jabril Peppers gets in there. See him coming off the right side, fighting in. That's two big plays he's made already. He had a tackle in open space, and then that sack. One thing he's doing here, he's controlling the ball. He's nearly already taken up three minutes on this opening drive. Vic will roll to the opposite side. Playing his feet, looking for the playmaker, and can't hang on. That was Tim Brown, the former Heisman winner, who couldn't hang on. For the first time in this game, you see that hit power out by the uh, secondary matter for Little Man there. What should have been a catch was jarred out by a great hit stick. So third and 17. He converted last time on a third and 14 from midfield. And he's backed up to the 42, no doubt. He's in four down territories here, so he doesn't have to get the full 17. Little Man shows pressure from the right side. When he hands it off here to Ricky Williams, maybe trying to catch him off guard, and he doesn't get maybe an inch. Big decision here. Going to be interesting to see what the play call is. You don't necessarily have to bring out the punter. He is not going to. But you got to be worried about open spaces in these zones because Little Man is leaving them for a reason. He just wants to deliver hits. He 
you need some guys out there that are willing to hang on to the football and you just force that in. If you can make a tackle here, it's as good as a punt. Net 11 yards. And we speak of all the high cap safeties he's using. It's the bargain player right there, Troy Apke. If you ask Dion, he can run, run. And he almost had a chance to run, run that back for six. Just gets caught by the shoestrings. So after the turnover, 90 seconds remaining in the quarter, little man will have the opportunity at the 31 to put on his first drive here at the LA Rams Club Championship. Coltrane and Grocery along with you. Of course, he's setting his audibles and just one just want to make sure everything is copacetic offensively for him. You are going to see him with a Steve Young with conductor. He is in the West Coast offensive book. Uh, a lot of people uh, debate between West Coast and New England. Depending on what you do, you can put different route chemistry specialists out there to make those books look very similar and be in the opposite version. Uh, he went ahead and put the deep route specialist on Julio, which means you'll probably see him in the slot more often than not. Uh, that's about the one position uh, that West Coast lacks in their bunch, which Little Man will be in mostly. Great crossing route there. Just a little simple in route that he waits for to beat the zone, picks it up. He's got the number 10 passing offense out of 128 in this Madden Club championship. So don't expect a lot of running here from Little Man. That's right, number 10 off, uh, passing offense, number 12 overall offense, even with that 111 rushing offense. That means when he airs it out, it is good more often than not. Defensively for OU Bobcats, and of course with him playing safety, you got to anticipate his secondary being where he spent most of his cap. And as soon as he saw that 1175 cap when it was moved up for this event, he said that's exactly what he did. Went to his secondary and proved his corners and little man's test them with Julio there. Can't get a foot and bounds, but that looked like they could have been picked off. He clicked on, but couldn't get any animation. Second and 10. That was a dangerous throw there by little man. Little man's gonna stay in the bunch, what he feels most comfortable in. Julio couldn't get it done last play, goes ahead and brings him in there. Just didn't get both feet down on the first time. That time's got much more room. Doesn't matter who's gonna hit him. That's one of the greatest to ever do it. Still 0-0 game after the INT on the opening drive. That and linebacker. Just throw it away. That linebacker just did work. Got two block sheds. Got a block shed on the center. The running back picked him up. He just pushed him out of the way. Little man smartly gets rid of the ball there. Second and ten. Been a while since we see Steve Young. You like to pick at quarterback? I do. Steve Young, if the main reason being. Vic is a lot of cap. Let, I mean, let's put it Ton. out there. Vic is a lot of cap, especially when you start putting things like conductor, like Little Man is using right now. Um, if you're going to use a left-handed quarterback, I use Steve Young. Uh, he tends, I'm going to say it right after he makes that overthrow, tends to not make as many overthrows as you'll see with Vic, but of course you will still see it. That's going to bring up a third and 10 from the 38. 55-yard field goal from there. That's maybe stretching it. Young, just need a few yards here, but why not wide open Amari Cooper? Big dot there, gets him in the field goal range. Little man went with the lowest cap kicker available, Dan Bailey. He needed those yards. And just gets behind that zone. Great possession catch to make sure you get your feet down. And this might be the final play of the quarter. We'll see what little man does here. On a first and 10 from the 23. And I think he's going to take it to the second quarter. So the first five minutes in the books, we've had two possessions, no scores. Yeah, little man threatening right now. He's going to go back to the gun bunch. This part of the field, all eyes have to be on Julio, especially if he's got that deep route chemistry. You know there's a lot more that he can do in that slot than what you're used to. Young, nice throw to Cooper. And that's the Raiders version of Cooper, as you can tell by the number 89. And he gets inside the red zone all the way down to the 12-yard line, first of 10. Fournette in the backfield. Haven't seen the ball handed off to him lately. He's just been back there as a blocker. Julio, no one there. You've got to have two people on him. Zero's not going to get it done for sure. You've got to double that man up. He's got that deep route chemistry. You know he's going to go over the field with that man, and that's too easy for one of the best Madden players of all time. So little man strikes first. And with the PAT, he'll go up 7-0. 
And now the pressure's going to be on Bobcats. Closest defender to uh, both of the, it uh, looks like two yellow zones is what he had there. Both those yellow zones bit on the underneath routes. Good play designed by Little Man. A scummy on the kick, but he'll step out of bounds at the 39-yard line, and that's where his drive will start. And you got to be careful when you're playing Little Man. I mean, it's, it's a high-powered offense. You don't want to get too far behind the eight ball here. Did a great job with possession on his drive last time, taking up nearly four minutes, but turned it over. That's the drive stall. Goes back to Ricky Williams again. Derwin makes a tackle one-on-one. -on -one. Good click on there by Little Man. If he makes him miss, there's a lot of space in front of him. And Ricky Williams has got about 95% of the touches in this Bobcat offense. Which I really like. I think that's what you got to do. The much hit power as Little Man has back there. You've got to dink and dunk, protect yourself, get down like he did that last play. I think he double tapped A there. And that looks like a double tap interception that is absolutely heartbreaking. But at least Ricky is the best defender on the team as well, making a tackle there. So Reed takes it all the way back as we look at it again. You can see just the lob. And then Ed Reed is off to the races. And if Ricky Williams doesn't catch him here, he takes it to the house. Young swings it out to Hurst, and Hurst will pick up the first down. Little truck there. Big man on little man. Dion thinks better of it. Instead of going for a hit stick there, we're just trying to try to knock that ball out. And so that'll bring up first and 10 from the 22, already leading by a touchdown. Detroit! Under four to play here in the first Detroit! half. Nickel normal look here. Shows pressure from the right side. Backs out of it, just sends the four. Young, he might take off. He's going to use his legs, and he'll slide down at the 13-yard line. It'll be second and short. And going back to that Vic versus Young debate there, that's, of course, the big trade-off you'll see there. Just not quite as mobile. Where Vic had it, you know, Vic would have had a chance to maybe even turn that into a touchdown. Young just can't quite pick up the first down. However, Little Man also gave himself up. No reason to give any kind of chance for a fumble there. Steve Young will go up under center here on second and one. Will we see a run for the first time today for a little man? Now Leonard Fernet is solo back right behind him. He'll hand it to him, and he will pick up the first down at the 11. So it'll be first and 10 with a chance to still get a first down here in the red zone. I like that play call there. First time we had seen Dollar for a long time out of uh, Bobcats, which just doesn't have enough beef on the field. Uh, Fournette finally gets the ball on a run there. Little man recognized uh, the now, Barney, Barney. personnel and the grouping that was on the field there. A little delay to Fournette. And he'll get loose. And it will be first and goal from the one. Yeah, just, just no hitters on the field for Bobcats. Uh, and he, it's by design there. He didn't want the hitters. He wanted the speed. He wanted to be able to keep up with guys like Tyreek and Julio going across the field. We saw a lot of the secondary on their backs on that last run. And here is a... The classic inside. Yeah, a little inside run. He knew it was coming. And pending the PAT, low man is going to be up by 14. Very early in the game, but you start to get the feeling that this is probably the most important possession for Bobcat of this entire tournament here. You've got to put some points up on the board. Kick is up, and it is good. So he's had it twice, and he's scored twice. And just Hurst goes in there untouched until that hit stick. I'm sure the touchdown feels a little bit better after you get up there. Mentioned all the experience by a little man. Bobcats in his first live oh, event. Oh, wow. And oh, nearly, wow. nearly recovered. It's an absolute game of inches there. And if you're Bobcat, your heart's about an inch away from your throat because you almost turned the ball over on the scummiest of kicks. Sean Taylor, who had a chance at it. High formation. Quick drop. Got a lot of room to run here. And he will take off with Michael Vick. Hey, if you can get 13, just get it. Oh, I'll take it every single time with Vic. Like the hurry up as well. Liked what he saw out of the defense. Little man didn't send any kind of pressure there. He's going to try to catch him with a quick hike here, I think. Yeah, only a three-man front here against that big eye formation. Blocks both the receivers. He's only, or blocks both the backs. He's only got, He's got three receivers. Deep. He's got a man deep. And 
can't click on and make the catch. Instead, it's Lowman picking it off with Sean Taylor, and he's got some room to run. He'll take it all the way back out to the 29-yard line. You got to click on and make a play offensively. Most definitely. And for the Twitch chat and everybody out there watching, I know you are going to ask, how does Sean Taylor look that fast? That is what happens when you take advantage of that sprinter and you max it out. Every single player is going to get plus two speed and the one excel, and that's what made the difference there. Young. I thought the pass came a little late, and it was also floated. And here's exactly what I mean here. The click on by Sean, he, like, he just makes up those two yards. He was behind that receiver, and that's because of that chemistry there. Got to put it where only your receiver can have an opportunity to make a play. And that's the third turnover. Three straight possessions for Bobcats. Three straight turnovers. And Lowell Man has scored every time he's had possession. Two good defenses there in a row by Bobcat. Got to stand up for yourself. If that last possession was the biggest offensive possession, then that means by default this is the biggest defensive possession. If you are going to send that pressure, it's time to send it now, and he does. And forces it in there, and it's caught at the 48-yard line. Triple coverage there. Who, double? No, yeah, that's triple. Julio goes up with one hand, picks it up, holds on to it as well, absorbs the hit. Maybe the best hands in the game. I know there's a few that are more highly rated, but the proof is on the field. And this time he throws a pick. Shazier steps in. Big time there, gets his pick right back, and that's exactly what you needed right there. You had to have a stop. You got your stop. Momentum is now on your side. What can you do here? Big lurk there, and my favorite thing to do in Madden after a turnover is go all the way up top. Yeah, it was a terrible throw by Little Man. He was in control of this entire ball game. At the very least, run the clock out to the half. You're going to get the ball, start the half here for Little Man. And now you give Bobcats a chance. And he finds a man up the seam and hangs on. At the 38, great find there by Vic. It's exactly what he saw in that last possession. He just got caught with that lob pass. Instead, this time, he takes a little more time, puts a little more power underneath that pass, and that same route gets in that same dead spot in the zone. Way to go back to what he saw work the first time. Didn't let that double tap affect him anyways. That is very high-level Madden from a man in his first live event. Starting to get a little bit momentum here. As Ricky Williams will pick up five. Empty backfield is again here. Anticipate double linebacker pressure coming from Little Man. When you see this, you usually send it. Vic. And he got Maybe hit, hit as he end. threw. Yeah. He's four for nine. And he's thrown three INTs. Fortunately for him, he's only down two scores here. I mean, you put something in right here, we got a ball game. Oh, absolutely. 30 seconds left. He's still got all his timeouts. He's in field goal range with the kicker that he has. He's not bad here. He's not in a bad position. Vic. Tight window, tight throw, but there's T.Y. One of my favorite route concepts since I've been playing mad. When you put those two slants on the field that cross each other right there, one of them always turns into a lead blocker, which is exactly what happened there. Not only does he get the catch, he ends up with an extra 10 yards because of that. Good play design. He's got two timeouts in 22 seconds. Plenty of time here. Nice looking drive here from Bobcats after the INT by Shazier. Offset is Ricky Williams. One back to the air and throws it into coverage. Lucky it's just going to be second down. Field shrinks a little bit here. Little man's only putting one spy on the field. I'd like to see Bobcats try to play with that spy a little bit, move around as, as, as high in the pocket as he can, so that line, as close to the line of scrimmage as he can, try to force that spy to engage with him. That way he's got a lot more room over the middle of the field to play make a receiver in to catch something. And I think he's using, he's using Page as a spy, right? 88? Yes. At the nose tackle? Yeah, just dropping him I back. I would just run, run it right up the gut. You got two timeouts. He'll roll out. And you see exactly what I mean there. Just that little bit of movement on the line of scrimmage forced that spy to come in. Even if Little Man clicked it in, that takes away one defender there. You have got to manipulate him. You've got to move around in the pocket. If you take a look at the box score, Bobcat should be down a lot more than he is right now, and he's standing up for himself. You put points on the board now, you are right back in this game. Got to at least get three. Got to have some sort of momentum going into the locker room here. 
11 seconds to go, two timeouts. Still can use the whole field. And he will finally hand it off. I thought that should have been the second down call. And he'll use a timeout here. And now you let two precious seconds run off. But with it being fourth and one, it'll be interesting what call he makes there. And he's going for it. It's going to be interesting to see what he comes out in here. Does he go with a beefy lineup because to a make up for the O-line with so little cap? Or does he come out and try to spread little man out to make up for the low O-line cap? It's going to be the pistol formation here on fourth and one. There you see Vic. As soon as you see that spy drop back, if little man's in it again, you just take off with Vic here. Five seconds. You don't got time for this, Bobcats. You don't have time for this. And he'll throw a pick to Brian Dawkins, and this might be six. One, One man to beat. to beat. Has to make a move, and that's how the half will come to an end. 14 to nothing in favor of a little man. Maybe even a game-saving tackle there at the end of the half. And he just, yeah, just, get, just gets out of it. Uh, I think he had a chance to run it before he even left the pocket. I think there was just, again, just a single spy on the field. He only needed a yard. He had a timeout in his back pocket. You pick up the first down, you put three points on the board. The way I always look at that situation is... You're down by 14. You're going to need three in there somewhere. Eventually. Eventually. So just take it. That's your opportunity to, to you know, put that donut in the trash can and at least put three up there. Yeah, that's what a lot of Madden players uh, get themselves caught up with uh, in the situation. Maybe they're down 11 at the end of a game. Uh, and instead of just taking that field goal, once you get into field goal range, you try to get into the, uh, the touchdown first, which you end up maybe wasting a little bit too much time. Uh, little things like that can really bite you in the butt. We're going to have a change of a controller down there. I'm not sure if it's Bobcats or the little man uh, that wants to make a move, and I think it is OU Bobcats. So, I mean, first of all, let me give you some advice. Excuses are a bridge to nowhere. Now, that's the first thing that Maurice Jones you taught me. And the other thing is a good craftsman never blames his tools. But, if hey, if you, if you have multiple controllers or multiple fields, uh, I'm not sure if he's using a PlayStation or Xbox or uh, – but if you're in a live event, in your first live event, uh, maybe you're not sure what to go with. Uh, and obviously this is all leading up to the big Madden 19 club championship. It all gets started out in San Francisco, January 30th, as the 32 teams from the NFL each send one representative to represent them in John Madden football. It's gonna be a blast next week. Definitely already got some huge names that are qualified for that. Uh, Nene, Little Man, and Bobcats looking to throw their name in the hat there as well. Yeah, and, and any of these guys would be a huge representative. Uh, and if, if we could get a Little Man and a Nene battle, I know they've had a, a, a ton of it online. Oh, yeah. um, so uh, I'm interested in seeing those two with an offline performance here if the score can hold up. They're ready to go, and so we're ready to go. Half number two. It's 14 to nothing in favor of Little Man, and he's going to have the ball to start the half. Yeah, Little Man getting the ball there is why I say that was a game-saving tackle when it came to that oh, interception. Yeah, if Little Man runs that back for six, and he's up 21 with the ball, he's pulling out the milk and cookies. And my guy RG, who's here in the building in Las Vegas, says he was using a PS4 adapter, but now has just decided he's going to switch to the Xbox. Uh, that's the system that they're playing on here in Las Vegas. So he's going to use the native controller to the, to the system. And we'll see if that makes a difference in the second half. First thing that immediately makes me think of the XA and the X square. Oh, that's, there. that's a nightmare. That'll ruin your day. The X button will ruin your day. Either way, I don't care what system you're going to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's instincts more than that. It's muscle memory. You see that X and you go to a certain position on the controller. If I ever become president of the world, uh, that's the first change I'll make. Okay. All right, so he's using the Xbox controller now. Uh, he's on defense. He's in the all-white. Lowell man's in the blue, and I guess we could say gold pants. I, I like to say yellow, but I, I think I think it's a little... It's, a, it's many different shades. It's, it's, I mean, it's a little some, in between Some there. schools might say maize. Some schools might say yellow. You know, some teams might say gold. I, I think it's blue and gold. Go a little, I'll, I'll go with that. 
Uh, one thing I did like to see, going back to the uh, controller that you saw there, even though it's his first live event, and you know I'm not sure how many times he's used an Xbox controller, clearly didn't feel as comfortable if he went with the PlayStation controller first as you see a wide open corner out there. And Rice will tight rope and he'll get into the end zone, the play of the game. But uh, Bobcats was making those adjustments very, very quickly. Uh, looked like he didn't have any kind of uh, hesitation switching those controllers whatsoever. Little man still able to take advantage and walk the tightrope there. This will make it 21 to nothing. Little man just holds on to it a little bit there, a little worried about the block, wants to make sure he goes up with four, three touchdowns. And you'll see here the corner route just wide open and just a great job of tiptoeing there. Makes the one guy miss, gets out of the animation. And as you see there, like a good Madden player will always do, you want to get as far away from those sidelines as possible. You don't want to, you know, get to the just numbers. accidentally get in there and just end up out of bounds at the five. So another short kick. This time it's filled in and immediately hit at the 39-yard line. So Lil Man has had four possessions, three touchdowns, and then he threw the INT with about a minute left in the first half. And now new controller, new mindset. The only problem is you're down 21. Let's see if Bobcats can go new controller, new me here. New year's resolution is to get a touchdown on this drive. So a lot of spinning, and that'll pick up four yards for Ricky Williams. Former Texas Longhorn. Played for a lot of different teams in the NFL. Trying to think, probably best as a New, a New Orleans Saint, I would have to say. Probably most remembered as a Saint as well. And, and there is T.Y. Hilton, and he almost got away, and he's tripped up at the eight yard line, and that was huge. Just barely gets shoestring there. Good motion to make the play happen. Did a good job of spreading the defense out. Made a little man make a, make, you know, you have to guard what you got to guard there. Just squeezes it into triple coverage and a good dive by a little man to catch him from behind. First and goal now, he'll go to the air. Three-step drop and he'll use his legs. And nice job containing Vic for a gain of one. It's gonna have to be a high pass here against the uh, defense that little man has set up in my opinion. Uh, maybe look at Will Ty on the outside there. Don't forget about Ricky on the wheel. He'll go to the table route, and this will go to the house. And I think he had Ty. He gone. And instead, he's got Derwin going the opposite way. Vic's got a chance, but no, not sir. after that. Dive. Not happening. It is a pick six for a little man, and the route is on. And that's another one of those plays when you go back and you watch it a second time and you see how wide open your tight end is, you make sure you don't make that mistake again. Will Ty is going to be wide open in the back of the end zone. Instead, he tries to force it to the table route, uh, which is probably the most comfortable route for most people who play Madden. I know when I play Madden, I tend to throw that table route more often. And um, I've probably thrown way more pick sixes than he has. I guarantee you that. Especially in that situation, on that part of the field, to throw the table route there is... It's a no-no. As you see there, uh, Little Man's going to cycle through his plays, and all of a sudden that yellow's going to go away. One of the advantages of playing salary cap, fatigue and stamina doesn't have as big as an impact. You can get those players back fresh. He wants to make sure all his 90-hit power guys are feeling as good as possible. Yeah, nice little tip there. Remember, there is no mercy rule here in the club championship, so they're going to have to play it out 28 to nothing. Just need some positive things to happen here for Bobcats and his first live event. Looking at his stats here, he had the number 12 rushing offense at a 128, but his passing was 110. Yeah, it's, it's hard to get down this much and be able to go to your bread and butter if you run the ball that much. 28-point uh, deficit, you need points quickly, which usually chunk yardage plays aren't, aren't going to happen in running, especially when Little Man has that kind of hitter. So Michael Ballantyne representing OU, not Oklahoma, that's Ohio University. That's where the Bobcats gamer tag comes in. And uh, the water's rising. That's all I can tell you right now. It is all little man. 
Definitely, and I know I know some of the guys that uh, Bobcats labs with TTS, Durfee, Cyrus, which I'm you know is a name that sure. rings everybody's bell, and that's someone that he plays with as well. I'm sure once he gets back home, gets back in the lab with those guys, he's going to be able to make an improvement and have a better showing as next time here. Well, just like Skimbo needed to improve on his running game, you can't be one-dimensional. Yeah, not at this level. I mean, I know Low Man likes to throw it around the yard with the best of them. Uh, but he also proved on his opening drive when he had to run the football with Fournette, he did it. Definitely. He noticed when the uh, smaller guys came into the game and he made the adjustment when he has to. Um, but a lot of that comes with time. An average of six yards a carry for Lil Man. Has scored on every possession but one. He threw an INT. At this point, you're just seeing little man milk the clock. He has no need to snap the ball before, I mean, really under five seconds until he has to snap the ball. Uh, he is more focused on seeing Nene in the finals and continuing that battle that they've had online for the last few months. Fournette will pick up another yard. Even the field goal here, still a four possession game, but the clock is not in favor of Bobcats. This one's over. This one's in the fridge. Butter's getting hard. Jello's getting jiggly. And Fournette inside the red zone. That'll be a first down down at the 13. One more snap before the fourth quarter will start here. 30-second play clock in the salary cap mode instead of the 40-second play clock that most people are comfortable with. And Fournette. Now that we'll get it to the 10, and that'll be the final. Play of the quarter, 28 to nothing. A little man with the lead and the ball. And it looks like so far, if he's been in that tight slots, it's been a handoff. Got smacked in the mouth in the backfield, though. Great job of holding on to the ball there by Leonard Fournette. So a third and eight from the 11. I'd be surprised if he doesn't run it again here. And it's a delay. And that's two plays in a row there. Bobcat showed incredible stick and got up the middle of the field there. Held him to three. Like you said, it's still a four-possession game here. It's not necessarily over-over. Grocery? Yeah. I, it's I, over. I, I, it's not over-over. It's kind of like the girls in high school that liked you but didn't like you like you. I would know nothing about <laughs> that. He's going to run this play clock all the way down under four minutes. And it's up, and it's good. We're just better as friends. I, I want to see us grow. <laughs> Little man looks locked in there. He is ready for Nene in the finals. You, I, I see the game plan going on in his head right now. He, he's planning for him. You can see when he's thinking. Deep kick will be brought out to the 23-yard line. And boy. Mm. You got to think here, little man has played Nini probably, you know, I don't like to exaggerate to make things sound better than they are, probably 100,000 times <laughs> in the last month online. They have been going back and forth for the longest this year. I am excited to see those two sit next to each other. And there's Ricky Williams coming out of the backfield. We'll pick up the first down of the 44 as little man is... Pretty much got an umbrella defense right now, dropping everybody back. He knows that Bobcats has to throw the football now. And Vic will get sacked by Khalil Mack. And even though Bobcat does have that number 12 rushing offense here, uh, it's, I think he's been most effective in that five wide. Just couldn't get away from Khalil Mack there too fast. Uh, but I think he looked the best in five wide besides that double tap that we saw, uh, which is just a heartbreaker. Uh, but offensively, he seemed to really know his route combinations there. Ricky Williams makes a man miss. You can, I can see the skill set. I can, I can see why Bobcats is here. And I bet online, I mean, he's really tough to take down, you know. It's a little different when you're facing one of the top, currently one of the top five players in all of Madden. Big catch there. Sean Taylor just doesn't quite get his chest into his chest. Holds on to it. Great catch. 
And you, you just got you, you to feel good about yourself here. Put some points on the board. Get your touchdown. Make sure you go home with some points. Get your confidence up a little bit. Jump back on those ladders. You've got another chance to qualify. We've got more belts to give away. Don't feel down on yourself, Bobcats. You made it here where thousands of others couldn't. Dion Swaggin after the tackle for loss. Second and 12 now, closing down another two minute warning. It's a 31 to nothing ball game. Screen, first one we've seen all day. Good pickup. We saw Bush, Bush early with the bubble screen. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, we did. Hey, but when nothing's working, you, you got to go deep into the playbook to try to figure out something. Get the ball in the hands of your playmakers. That's going to. Take Ricky Williams out of the ball game here as fatigue starts to set in offensively for Bobcats. A lot of your backups in there right now. Well, I think he could have ran for the first down. Yeah, that little hesitation. He saw the wheel route start to get open, then realized if he threw it, he was going to be very close to being above the line of scrimmage. That little hesitation ends up turning a potential first down into a fourth down. Timeout called. The two-minute warning called there, excuse me. Little man looking to come out in 3-3-5 again. He's been sending pressure off the right most of this game. So what's the scattering report for this next game? I know you're talking about these guys playing each other a lot. We talk about Little Man and Nini, but I think maybe Nini is a bit more balanced, especially offensively. Definitely is. Definitely keeps you guessing a little bit more. Um, the issue for both players there, who can stay that one step ahead? Um, neither one of these players from talking to them before the tournament switched most up from their regs offense to their salary cap offense. Of course, with chemistries and such, you have the, the ability to put different routes on the field, but it's really going to be about who game planned for each other the most. Talking to both of them, they told me they expected to play in the finals. No disrespect to the other players they played, of course, but they came here and they knew if they were going to win this Rams championship, it was going to have to go either from Nini or from Little Man, they were going to have to beat each other. Both these guys, 29 years old. I'll tell you one big difference between Little Man and Nini. Nini's collected $5,500. You can see him right there talking to RG, getting ready for the final. He's, he's got $5,500 in career winnings, while Little Man has won over $30,000. So if, if you're looking for the tell of the tape, that's going to be the big number uh, that tells me that we're going to have a great, great final here in the Los Angeles Rams Club Championship. Oh, definitely looking forward to that here. Little man, great sportsmanship. Go ahead and punt it on fourth down. No reason to go for it on fourth and 12 with only 30 seconds left in the game. Love to see the sportsmanship even this far in the game. So he'll run this thing all the way down. And Bobcats will have one more chance to crack the scoreboard here. He's... Got a donut sitting up there. Gets it out of bounds. Good coffin corner. 18 seconds left. Let's see, can we get some of these pride points on the board for Bobcats? Stand up for yourself here. You flew out to Las Vegas, Nevada. That man's been here before. You see him locked in. From the gun, Vic once again. Four-man rush, and he just has to chunk it up. And that'll be caught, but out of bounds. And so now second and ten. Final few opportunities for Bobcats, who has come to Vegas, made himself two grand just getting to this level. Beat some big names to get here. Huge names. Definitely. Getting past Han Solo, and I'm wild in the online portion of that bracket. Comes in, shows that he is one of the most competitive Madden, one of the best Madden competitive players in the world. But Little Man advances to play Nini, the matchup everybody wanted to see when they saw the bracket for this Los Angeles Rams club championship. And we are about to see.